Hello, everybody. Um, so as already uh, Gabriel mentioned, today I want to give a very brief introduction of what uh, the Reuse Initiative is, uh, because now, as is, uh, if you have been here uh, during the whole track, we have learned the importance of uh, license, licenses and copyright, and therefore it is also important to uh, declare this information on your project. So uh, the FSFE created the Reuse Initiative uh, five years ago, uh, and it basically aims to make the, the declaring this legal information in your project easy, but also uh, fun. Uh, it seeks to be uh, readable for humans and machines alike, as well as it uh, sticks to already existing best practices. So to um, start with, I would like to um, talk a little bit about the common mistakes that uh, we have seen uh, so far, kind of like the state of play of uh, how projects actually declare licensing and copyright information at the moment. So we have noticed that there is definitely missing information about license or, or an copy, copyright of own or third party code. And uh, this is connected with the second uh, issue, which is that reusers may overlook this legal information. And we have already seen that uh, licenses and copyright, it's important, and then actually if you overlook this information, you might uh, incur in, into some uh, legal issues as well. Uh, there is also a little bit of a problem about um, how to deal with multiple licenses, because if you are a developer, uh, you know that your project might be under more than one license, and therefore it is a little, a little bit tricky to know how you display this information when we're talking about more than one license. Uh, there is also a little bit of license ambiguity because uh, so far we have seen that some projects have a, an, an annotation of the license, let's say in this case the GPL and then it says version 3, but we know that there is a GPL version uh, 3 only or version 3 or later and then this is not clarified uh, on the way it is displayed and therefore it's a little bit ambiguous to know exactly where the the, the license that the project is using. And uh, there, is, there are also already some conflicting best practices. So for instance, uh, some people store the text of the license in a file called uh, copying, some others uh, store it in a, in a file called license or in the readme file, so it is a, bit, a little bit un, uh, unclear where to find this information uh, so far. So, that is the reason why uh, the FSFE decided to create uh, the Reuse Initiative. Uh, the Reuse Initiative is based in some principles. So, as I already mentioned, we're trying to make easy, but also uh, fun, to find the copyright and license information, because we're going to store this information in every single file of our repository. Uh, we are going to avoid silos because, again, we're going to uh, store the info of the repository as close as possible to the code, so everything is going to be inside our project, and every information that you need to know about the project is going to be within the project. Uh, I already mentioned this, this information is readable by humans and also by machines, so uh, later in the workshop you will see that with the help of our reuse tool, uh, the reuse tool is able to identify this information and you as well, you are able to go through every file and then read the, this information. And again, we're making licensing easy. Uh, as we have seen, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, things to take into account, but we're trying to make it easy for developers to actually comply with uh, these legal uh, obligations. And how are we going to do this? So we're going to do, we're going to make our project reuse compliant with very simple uh, steps, which are three steps. We're going to choose and provide a license. Again, we already learned a little bit about licenses, the importance of them. Uh, we're going to add the copyright and licensing information to each file of our repository. And then finally, we're just going to confirm that our project is reuse compliant. So let me go one by one. So the first one, we're going to choose and provide the licenses. So uh, once you have made the decision uh, of like which uh, license you're going to use for your project, you're going to store the text of this file uh, in 
in a file, in a text file that you're going to save uh, under a directory that we're going to call licenses. So this is actually one of the first features of reuse. We are going to have a dedicated directory where you're going to find all the licenses used in the project. And we're going to name this text file um, after the SPDX license identifier tag. Again, we're trying to already stick to uh, existing best, best practices. And for those that don't know, SPDX is already a project that is trying to um, make standard the way this legal information is displayed. So in this example, we see the root of a project. And then we see that uh, there is a, pro a directory called licenses. And within this uh, directory, we have the GPL3 or later. Uh, and then the tag is. Uh, used uh, there as well. So it is it's very clear to know what license the project is using. Then we're going to add the copyright and license information for every single file of our repository. And we're going to do it through a header. And the header is going to look like here in the example. Again, we're going to make use of the SPDX license identifier tags as well as the SPDX file copyright text. So in this case, we see that this specific piece of code is under the GPL trio later and that the Indo is the copyright holder. So it's very straightforward. Uh, I know that in this, in this moment you might be wondering, OK, but there are some files that I cannot edit, such as binary files, image files, JSON files. But for this, we have uh, two alternatives. We recommend one more than the other. Um, however, we have two options. Uh, we have first a separate dot license file in which we're going to store this information. So in this case, we have the picture of a cat. And then we're going to create a dot file, a dot license file, that in which we're going to include the license identifier as well as the copyright text. So whenever we go to the image directory and we see the picture of the image, we can go to the text file and find this legal information. But I, uh, we also know that if your project is pretty big, and let's say you have 2,000 pictures and creating 2,000 uh, individual files for every image is, very, is not ideal and actually will double the size of your project. So for these cases, uh, we have the dev file file, uh, which is a project by, the, by Debian. And we're going to store this dev file file in a, in a dedicated directory called dot .reuse. And here we're also going to specify what directory and what the copyright and license information is. So again, in the example, we see that all the pictures in the image directory um, are under the CC BY uh, 4, and Great Artist is the copyright holder. However, in this case, we, uh, we advise to really make sure that you know that the legal information is correct, because you might be including some files that might not be under this legal uh, information. So, if you're going to make use of this uh, option, please be re really careful about this. And third, we're just going to confirm that our project is reuse compliant. So with our help tool, it's going to scan our project, and it's going to tell us how many files uh, have this information. can also show us uh, what licenses have been used in a project. And then in this case, we can see that our project is reuse compliant because six out of the six files contain this um, information. Again, we're going to learn a little bit more about this in the workshop that we're going to have after this talk. So if you are interested to see how this actually works, then stick around. So um, here we have, I would like to talk a little bit about the components of reuse. So we have first uh, a set of best practices that I uh, went very briefly today, such as the licenses directory. We're going to add this information in individual files. We also have options for files that you cannot edit. Uh, and we're trying to do this to make standard the way um, this legal information is displayed. We have a Herpel tool that uh, in, we're going to learn more about this in a workshop, uh, which actually supports developers in the process of making projects reuse compliant. We have uh, very nice uh, things that the tool does, such as adding the, uh, the header or scanning, uh, linting, you know, linting the, the project to see what you're missing. We also have a tutorial uh, with a, and an FAQ. This tutorial um, shows you how to make a project reuse compliant. 
And the FAQ also gives answers to some questions, uh, basic but also advanced questions. And also not only about reuse, about the tool, but also some legal questions. So uh, we highly recommend that you take a look at the FAQ because it's pretty, it's pretty good. And we have an API in which you can register your project whenever uh, it becomes reuse compliant. And then you're gonna get a very nice uh, dynamic batch, batch that you can put on your repository and then everybody that goes to your repo can see that your project, your project is uh, reuse compliant. And uh, to very briefly talk about who has adopted reuse. So uh, in our API, we have more than 1,200 projects registered. Uh, the majority of projects uh, from our next generation internet initiative um, have implemented their use um, uh, recommendations. Uh, the next generation internet is a European Commission funded project. Um, in the area of more like community, so KDE for instance, and all its frameworks um, have also implemented uh, reuse. And they actually have also included in their policy um, in their uh, policy di uh, directive or guidelines. Uh, projects such as CUR or GNU Health and also Cosmos Scout, which is a project by the German uh, Aerospace Center, have also become risk compliant. From the corporate side, we also have uh, Siemens, Huawei, SAP, SAP LaFre, LF Energy, and partially the kernel of Linux have also implemented reuse because it's pretty big. And uh, the question is if you and your project or the project or friends are gonna become reuse compliant. Um, for this, I, I would like to uh, finish my presentation for today saying that we, are, uh, we welcome any contribution either from uh, you joining the mailing list to join the discussion or also contributing with code Reuse is a free software, and people that maintain, and maintain uh, this uh, software wouldn't mind any extra help there. Um, and yeah, and again, if you, we also have the Reuse Booster, which is uh, trying to make a little bit uh, closer experience with projects in which we support them in the process of making Reuse compliant, because in the end, we want Reuse to become the standard way to declare this legal information. And with this, I would like to thank you all, and I think I have uh, some minutes to take some questions, so thank you very much.